When you have a Colorado tag on your vehicle and you drive to any other state, the cops want your nuts, bro. It's like a fucking bullseye on your shit. They're like, this guy has a fucking vehicle full of weed because it came from Colorado. What's up, everybody? Cupins here, and on today's video, we are going to talk about the second time I thought I was going to jail on my move from Colorado to Florida. So if you missed the first part, I told the first part of the story where cops were looking for the person who lived at the house I'm in right now after I sent myself a bunch of bongs. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below. This is part two of the story because I thought I was going to jail another time. So I moved from Colorado to Florida. It's about a 2,000 mile trip. A couple hours into it, I get the call. I think I'm going to jail. I'm super panicked. So, something that we wanted to do afterwards, like, well, let's see if we can just take a little bit more time on our trip, maybe see more family. So, my girlfriend has some family in Kentucky, which is uh, a pretty cool state, you know, I, they don't like weed over in Kentucky, but other than that, it's cool to look at, uh, it's a cool state. We were by the Mississippi River, so I got to see that, but we stayed in Kentucky for maybe four or five days at a house with some family in a rural area. In a rural area. In a rural area. We did the same thing. We kind of left later in the night. I like driving at night. I don't mind. Way less cars on the road. Uh, the weather's cooler in general. It's just, I like it. I don't mind. If I'm gonna be driving for hours and hours and hours, I kind of prefer it to be at night because it's a little easier. So we leave in the night. And the road that I'm on, it's like, Two lanes, one going both ways. There's just like tons of dead deer along the road. So I'm just like being very cautious. Driving a little slower than is recommended. And uh, I notice instantly there's like a, an SUV behind me. A nice newer SUV. And I couldn't tell if it was a cop. But in my head I'm like let's just assume it is. And let's just make sure we're not swerving. I just, I never want to get pulled over. When you have a Colorado tag on your vehicle and you drive to any other state, the cops want your nuts, bro. It's like a fucking bullseye on your shit. They're like, this guy has a fucking vehicle full of weed because it came from Colorado. I swear that's the mentality. And um, anybody that has a Colorado plate that has driven through Kansas, Texas, Missouri, Kentucky, if you've driven through these places, the... They look for you. They want you. They just assume that you're the guy. So this SUV is following me for, I think it was like eight miles until I get onto the interstate, basically. And I'm just making sure I follow every road rule I can. I'm not speeding. I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I get onto the highway. I merge from the on-ramp. And as soon as I get on, I see flashing lights behind me. It was a cop. He really wanted to pull me over. He was following me for miles and miles, I guess, waiting for anything. He pulled me over for not using my blinker to get on the interstate. And honestly, I never do it. I might never do it again in my life. I did it the whole rest of the day because I was like, oh my God, this guy got me. But I merged onto the highway, you know, it kind of turns into one lane. Well, you feel silly using a blinker. You're like, well, I'm not changing lanes. I'm just becoming this other. There was no cars I was affecting. My indicator wouldn't have signaled anybody other than the cop that wanted to pull me over. So he pulls me over. I have four dogs. I have a cat. I have my girlfriend in the car. We're all freaking out. My dogs bark. They're going to bark. I got a little, I got some little dogs, little dogs bark. So this cops walking up to my car. I have my window cracked and I'm just like yelling out, hey, just warning you, I have a bunch of barking dogs. They're gonna be barking or whatever. I just, I don't know. I'm not like super comfortable with the situation and super stoked about having this interaction with a Kentucky police officer in a random area. He was a canine officer and said he worked in like drug enforcement or whatever. I didn't know exactly what he said, but he said that his main goal was, you know, to make sure people aren't moving through his town with hundreds of pounds of stuff, which is what he told me. 
And I'm going to be straight with you guys. When I moved from Colorado to Florida, I knew there was a very high chance of me getting pulled over and possibly searched. So I made it a point to not bring any weed on me, any dabs, any edibles. We didn't bring shit. If I wanted to get a little bit of cannabinoids in my system, I bought CBD at stores in states like Missouri and Georgia. I went to the store to get CBD there so I could have a receipt from the location. So I can be like, nah, dude, I bought this here in your state. I didn't, I didn't even, I was too sketched to bring CBD from Colorado just because it said Colorado on it. Because I knew they wanted my nuts with the Colorado plate. So I was very, very sure I was going to get pulled over or I knew there was a high chance of it. So I didn't want to have any chance of possibly going to jail, possibly getting my dogs and cat taken away. I've heard horror stories. This is a story I've heard a few times of somebody getting thrown in jail when they have their dog with them and their dog gets put in the pound, gets put in, you know, whatever. Sometimes they'll put your animal up for adoption. Sometimes they'll put your animal down. And these things can happen while you're waiting to get out of jail. So, like, I knew that there was any possibility of me losing my animals. There was any possibility, so I wanted to try to avoid that. So I didn't bring shit. There was no, no, you know, vacuum, nothing. I didn't bring anything. But I knew there was a possibility. I had like a lot of my clothes, a lot of my belongings, stuff that had been in rooms with me smoking. So I'm like, eh, if he pulls the canine out, the canine's going to hit something. Like, there's no way I just moved all my shit from Colorado and a canine's not going to smell a little bit. Even if I have no weed on me, I just, in my head, I'm like, it's possible. Like, what? Imagine if, like, they're going through my shirts and there's, like, a fucking gram of shatter, like, stuck to the elbow on my sleeve or something that I forgot about. You know, there's, like, in my head, there was, there was always a possibility of I could have accidentally brought something or they would have smelled it either way or there was a crumbs of, of a nug in something or on, you know what I mean? I thought that if a canine's in my car, like, we were done. He had the canine with him. Never brought the dog out of the car. Never did, which which I'm really grateful for. He just talked to me, talked to my girlfriend for a bit. I know for the most part, um, when dealing with a police officer, especially in a cannabis situation, most people will advise that you don't say shit. You don't talk about your day. You don't admit to anything. And then you just basically ask, you know, am I being detained? Why was I pulled over? I knew that in my head is one of the, the more advised things to do. But I also understand that that type of behavior can piss a police officer off. It can piss a human being off because you're essentially telling them, no, uh, you can't do what you want to do in a lot of cases. So I didn't want the officer to think I might have anything because I know that I didn't. So I said that he could search. I said that, you know, he could check out anything if he wanted, but my number one concern was that I wanted to make sure my animals were safe. Uh, he didn't end up searching, didn't even pull the canine out to sniff around, nothing. Uh, he even told me uh, several times, he's just looking for people with, you know, 200 pounds. He's, I'm looking for people with a lot, so if you guys have a small amount, that's cool. He stressed that several times, but I said, listen, bro, uh, small town cops are not cool with weed. I didn't even bring a fucking small amount. I didn't want to count on you being cool with me having a small amount, so I didn't even bring that. He pulled me out of the car at a certain point. This is where I got a bit sketched because I got pulled out of the vehicle for like more questioning or whatever. He just wanted to take me back. I think it was just to try to see if I was acting nervous or if I was going to keep looking back at a certain spot. I don't know. He just kept asking about secret compartments. I had a, a top carrier on there. I had the shit was packed in my van like wherever there was space I just had belongings and uh, it was packed with that and he even commented you don't look like you have a lot of stuff if you're moving and I'm like am I gonna bring a fucking couch 2,000 miles across the country no I'm gonna sell a couch and then fucking buy a new one so it was a very very interesting encounter at one point in the encounter he even asked me like what kind of stuff do I do like for a living or whatever and I I knee-jerk response with, oh, I do like streaming and make videos and stuff. And he responded with, oh, you make videos? You have like a YouTube channel or something? And I'm just like, oh, God. Why did I say YouTube? Why did I mention that? He asked me if I had a YouTube channel. And they said, what kind of stuff do you make? I just was like, uh. 
spaced out for a second because I'm like, how do I, what do I, my girlfriend chimed in, oh, he just does like a lot of IRL stuff. And then I immediately latched on like, yeah, I just did a bunch of like the last few days I've been walking around Kentucky doing live streams, showing off the area. So like, that's just what I mentioned. And then we talked about that and the Mississippi, right? Kind of, kind of had a little bit of change in the topic because what, what, what kind of YouTube videos do you make, Cubans? Uh, a well canine officer who's looking for weed. Uh, I've ha I have such hits as I bought a, an ounce of weed for 25 cents and, uh, I have another one of me smoking an eighth of weed in under five minutes. Uh, I didn't want to get into it, so uh, I'm glad my girlfriend changed the subject on me there. But it was it was just very scary overall. I mean, he took me out of the car, asked me a bunch of questions, sent me back into the car. He told me that he was going to have me go sit back in the car and then pull my girlfriend out and talk to her. But when he pulled me over, like, there was a barrier along the side of the road. I actually pulled up as close to that as I could. And when he was walking over, he was like, oh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to... Or it doesn't look like she's going to be able to get out. So he just had her roll her window down, asked her just a few questions. Had us just restate, you know, basically that we, we didn't have a little bit or a lot. And at the end of the interaction, he says... He says, you know, I believe you guys. I don't think that you have anything on you but you could have 200 pounds on you so i'm just gonna let you go and it was really interesting to me i was thankful for that he really didn't search he really didn't look in the van too much he just saw that we had dogs uh talked to us about his dog and his scv the the canine unit or whatever but he said you know you could have 200 pounds on you but i believe you guys and you can go have a nice day. And I was, just, I was very relieved. I was still nervous. It's one of those things. You're like, fuck. There's a police officer behind me. I have a Colorado tag on. I'm not in Colorado. This is not a good combination. But he let me go. And I'm just, I'm so relieved. And I'm driving away. And I, I just had one, like one thought in my brain the whole time as I'm, as I'm driving away, like just this whole weight is coming down. It's leaving. I'm just so relieved. And then I can't help but think, fuck, bro, I could have had 200 pounds on me. I could have fucking brought pounds of that shit. I mean, I couldn't afford 200 pounds, but if somehow I had 200 pounds, that cop literally said, bro, you could have 200 pounds on you, but you're good to go today. So fuck, bro, I could have got away with 200 pounds. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But in all seriousness, holy fuck. I was very scared. I didn't like it. I knew that that interaction was going to happen, or there was a high chance of it happening, me getting pulled over in a state that wasn't Colorado because I had a Colorado plate like that that just adds a high level of suspicion to anybody any state where they don't have legal weed or even like medical on the horizon like they oh, listen buddy I don't care about you and your drugs you know like they don't give a fuck so that's what I knew I knew I was going to end up going to some places where they had way different views than other parts of the world, so I made sure to bring no weed on me at all, and I, I could have had 200 pounds, but I didn't. I don't even weigh 200 pounds, fuck. Uh, but thank you. If you like this video, it's part two. If you missed the first part, link is below, but check out my social medias. I also have links for my Twitter, my Instagram, all that shit. Go check out the links below. And for my live streams, tune into my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash coupons. I might be live right now. Tune into that shit. Or don't. Or do. Peace out. We'll see you on the next one. More videos coming soon. Should be approved for my medical card. And we're going to have tons of hauls, tons of dabs, tons of flour, all kinds of stuff coming soon. Hang out for that.